welcome back to the Urban Monk. Uh, today is Environment Meets Politics Day. Uh, for me, uh, in particular, I've been watching and reading these headlines about, you know, Trump's budget and what he's doing to the EPA and all these kinds of things that you know people start to feel helpless about. And my stance on that is absolutely not. You are not to feel helpless. You are to get mobilized and you're to activate and take that mama bear and papa bear energy and do something constructive with it and fight for the rights that we've, you know fought for so long and hard, and we do not want to be in a regressive environment. So today I have my friend from Friends of the Earth, Lisa Archer, over. Uh, they're great friends of ours. Uh, they were involved with the, the Origins movie uh, last go around, and um, they've been very involved in helping us kind of plug into good resources and being part of the Prosperity movie. They're doing great work out there, and I wanted to call in Lisa and be like, yo, what do we do? How do we get involved? How do we help? So hi, welcome, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks, Pedro. Great to see you. Yeah, great to see you. And so you're you're a, a new mom again, and so <laughs> there's that mama bear energy right back right back at it. And so like you're you're on the front lines. It actually amazed me when we, when we hung out last was in the um, was it the Brennan Building? What is it? What's what's the name? David Brower Building? Brower yeah. Building, yeah, the yep. famous building in Berkeley yeah. where you guys are. Uh, you know, posted up, and I was just like, wow, you have so much bad news about the world landing on your desk every single day, and you were like, I don't know, like nine, ten months pregnant at that point. I mean, you were so pregnant. I was like, and yet you choose to keep bringing children in the world, so there's hope, right? Like, there's yeah. there's hope, there's hope. We're doing this for, for a reason, and that, that really, it was it was very, like, touching for me to see that someone who gets all this bad news and fights that fight is still, you know, a tender mother and, and is, you know, bringing children in. Mm -hmm, definitely. I mean, it's, it's about the kids, right? It's about us, but fundamentally it's about giving our kids a livable and healthy and democratic country and healthy world for the future. You know, it's about them. And, and I do, I do have hope or else I'd be, you know, holed up in a cave in Alaska, not having any kids, but I do truly believe that there are so many solutions available to us, but we've got to fight for them. It's not going to be handed to us. That's it. That's it. I mean, I, I think a lot of people lost hope and just drink Dr. Pepper and like watch daytime <laughs> TV or something. Right. right. And that's, you know, right. and that's a bad place to be. That does, that's not really, um, uh, proactive in any way. So uh, I know Friends of the Earth, but a lot of my listeners might not. Can you tell us a little bit about what the, the organization is, what sure. you guys do, how y'all roll? Sure. So Friends of the Earth was founded by David Brower, and the name of our building actually we're in right now, um, in 1969. And we're the U.S. voice of the world's largest federation of grassroots environmental groups. We're in 75 countries around the world. Um, and Friends of the Earth works to defend the environment and champion a more healthy and just world for everybody. And you know, to accomplish our mission, uh, we work really at the nexus of environmental protection, of economic policy, and social justice to transform the way our country and the world value people in the environment. Um, right now, we focus on promoting clean energy solutions to climate change, ensuring the food we eat and the products we use are sustainable and safe for our health and our environment, and protecting um, our oceans and our marine ecosystems. Um, and we work in Berkeley, California, Washington, DC, um, but we are supported by this work by more than a million members and online supporters and activists from across the country. Yeah, well, you guys are you're out there fighting the fight. I've, I've you know I've witnessed it firsthand, and you know there's the, especially in this climate. I mean, you guys are busy. <laughs> Um, there are a number of things, kind of assaults on some of the progress that's been made over the years um, by the right. Trump administration and, you know, kind of EPA rollbacks and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, you yourself are uh, involved in the food program, yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I direct our food and technology program, and we're really working to transition our food system to one that is sustainable and healthy and just for everybody, um, which is what we kind of view as the food system of the future. The ball is rolling on that. We are building a safer and more sustainable food system every single day the market is shifting there but we've got to speed that ball up yeah so what when you say the ball is rolling what does that look like mm -hmm. are we seeing growth in sure. organic sector like how do you measure mm -hmm. that yeah, actually, um, that's one of the exciting things that give me a lot of hope. Organic, um, sustainable food, um, which is healthier for people and for the planet, is growing faster than any segment 
of the food market right now. So we're getting a lot of progress. It's still not a big enough percentage of the market, but we're gaining huge ground in that area. And and organic isn't just, you know, something that's elite and for foodies to eat. It's it's really about um, I, I look at it as sort of empathy and compassion, not only for ourselves and our health, but also for the farmers growing our food and for the farm workers um, that are growing our food to be less exposed to pesticides. It's better for bees and other pollinators and the environment. Um, and it's also um, better for the communities that are that are um, actually benefiting economically as well as by being exposed to less pesticides, those agricultural communities out there, a lot of whom voted for Trump. Um, so there is huge hope that we can transform the food system, but we're just getting started and there's so much work to do. There really is. One, one of the yes. um, impressive campaigns that I've been tracking that you guys had uh, kind of championed was this kind of backyard bees initiative that yep. uh, really started, I don't know, what, a couple of years ago now. Um, mm -hmm. It's been, yeah, and, and you know, it started with just, you know, talking about the neonics and these things that, that you know, harm our bees, and then doing an awareness campaign, starting with, the, yep. I think, Home Depot and Lowe's. So just, yeah, help, uh, you know, help kind of catch us up on that, because uh, I know that there's still some, yeah. some uh, you know, some front lines there. Yeah, so we're making huge progress there. Um, you know, just to back up a little bit, you know, our, our food program really focuses on a few things. You know, we're working to ensure that the food system is healthy and sustainable and just. And really the way we're doing agriculture right now, the way the food system is geared right now is all about selling more pesticides and chemicals. It's in the hand of a, a it's in the hands of a few corporations that are really powerful and make a lot of money from selling pesticides and control a lot of our seeds like Monsanto and Bayer. And Bayer is one of the biggest manufacturers of bee killing pesticides called neonicotinoids. And it turns out they don't actually uh, help us to grow any more food, especially soy. They're very, they, they don't increase yield for things like soy. For corn, um, the benefits are really minimal, but they are on every single corn and soy seed out there nearly and they um, you know whether and you need them or whether there's a bug within 100 miles or not they are used on our food and it turns out that the, this is uh, one of the key drivers that's killing bees and we actually need bees for one out of three bites of food they're critical pollinators they are not only important for our food system but for our ecosystem for all the flowering plants out there and how we like to put it is they're sort of the canary in the cornfield telling us that the way we're growing food right now is not only harming bees, but our planet and our ability to feed ourselves in the future. So we started to look at this issue and said, well, how can we make a difference? And we know that a lot of people are trying to protect bees in their own backyards. They're planting bee-friendly flowers and gardens. Our communities have bee gardens. And we started to look at that and said, well, gosh, good. We have bee-friendly places in our cities and our communities. But then we found out that these same bee-killing pesticides that are being used out in our farm fields are also being um, used in the garden bedding plants that we all buy at Home Depot and Lowe's to try to plant those bee-friendly gardens. So we sent these plants to the lab, and we found out that bee-friendly flowers actually are pre-treated with bee-killing pesticides. It's almost like we're luring the bees into our yards to kill them. And so we asked Home Depot and Lowe's and Costco and Walmart and all the big garden centers out there to stop selling pre-poisoned plants to people. We said, this is crazy. Nobody wants to be poisoning bees in their own backyards. And it took a little while, but we convinced these retailers um, to stop selling these bee-killing pesticides in their plants and off-the-shelf products so that we could have bee-friendly havens in our backyards and communities. This campaign has really caught fire. We have uh, mobilized over half a million people to, you know, from Girl Scout troops to moms to backyard gardeners and beekeepers to farmers to push for change. And that's resulted in um, nearly all the major retailers, including just recently Walmart and True Value agreed to stop selling uh, bee-killing pesticides, which was a huge victory. So we've got most of the garden industry saying, no, we're not going to use these bee-killing pesticides anymore. We've got people across the country who are mobilizing to protect bees um, in state legislatures. So we recently worked with folks in Maryland to pass a law that wouldn't allow the use of um, these toxic pesticides on state land. We've also, and, and restrictions on bee-killing pesticides, Massachusetts. Massachusetts has got to build moving quickly. California, all over the country, there's folks in nearly every state that are working on this issue and are making real progress. So, you know, when we, it just goes to show that when we organize together and we work together, we can win. 
That's amazing. And um, this is just such a hopeful story for me because if we can protect bees, we can start to shift the way we grow food and, and really ensure that future generations have healthy food. And right now we're moving on to grocery stores because that's where most of these bee killing pesticides and these harmful practices that are harming bees and all of us are being used. And we're seeing this huge growth in the organic food sector. We know people want healthy food for their families. They don't want to be harming the environment with the choices they make in the marketplace. And we know we have solutions that organic agriculture is a win. It's a win, win, win. It's a, it's better for bees and pollinators. Um, you know, it's, it's better for our health, our families and communities. It's better for these farm workers and farm farmers who grow our food and for the land that provides us nourishment for pollinators that make food production possible and for the ecosystems that sustain all of us. And so we're really working to move on to food retailers, which have a huge amount of say in terms of what's grown and how it's grown and the food we all have access to in the marketplace. And we're saying, we want you to commit to not using bee killing pesticides on our food. And we want you to massively increase and make more available the healthy organic food that doesn't have toxic pesticide residues for our families so that we can protect bees and all of us. So who have you gone after on the, the grocery sure. retail side? So, you know, what's really remarkable is I think our success in convincing the garden retailers to stop selling bee killing pesticides has really opened up the other retailers to listening to us about this issue. And the science is so compelling. And they know that without bees, they can't stock the food that we all need to eat. A third, one out of three bites of food is dependent on bees. So what we did, we started out, we put together a report card that you can check out on our website at www.foe.org. Um, and you can check out a report card. We grade the top 20 retailers on their policies about protecting pollinators and their policies on selling organic food and how much organic they're offering to the public. Turned out 17 out of 20 failed. Um, however, there were some bright spots and we saw many retailers, um, including Whole Foods and even some surprising ones like Costco scored pretty good. And so that opened up the doors to a lot of conversations. So we're actually in dialogue with a, um, eight out of the 20 top, 20 top retailers right now about how they can protect bees and how they can offer and make more available organic food to all of us. Because organic really shouldn't be just for the wealthy, like Ivanka Trump, Trump, interestingly enough, feeds her kids organic and blogged about how great it was. And at the same time, her dad um, was in the Oval Office with the head of Dow Chemical, stopping restrictions on a brain toxic pesticide, a pesticide chlorpyrifos, that is, is, is hugely harmful for workers and particularly for babies whose brains are still developing. It can cause learning disabilities. And there's an immense amount of science saying we should ban this. EPA was about to ban it. And... Dow Chemical gave $100 million to Donald Trump's campaign committee, and next thing you know, he's signing an executive order to keep this toxic chemical on the market and on our food. Ironically, his daughter is saying, eat organic, they still have the White House garden open, so that's not good. But we know the market can't be stopped. We know we cannot stop the momentum that's happening now. And so we're pushing on these grocery retailers um, to stock more organic and to stop selling bee killing pesticides, which is a way to counter this craziness that's happening in DC. Um, and the other thing that we're doing is we're actually asking specifically Kroger, um, that's, that's our current um, focus of our campaign because they're really kind of dragging their feet and they are you know, not dialoguing with us and, and moving forward and protecting bees and all of us. And so we're actually doing a week of action. Um, we're going to Kroger's shareholder meeting with other um, people who've invested in the company saying, you need to do better for investors. You need to do better for all of us. And we're asking them to stop selling bee killing pesticides and increase their offerings of organic for all of us. We also have a week of action where folks can go to our website at beaction, just B E E action.org. You can sign a petition to Kroger, let them know how you feel and that you want healthier food for bees and for all of us. Great. And so what about uh, economic uh, sanctions or something like that? Like how, if you shop at a Kroger market, do you go in, do you talk to the manager? Do you tell yeah. them what, you know, like, is there something that I could print out that I could take to them and say, look, this is, this is what I'm talking about. I want you to talk to your boss about it. 
Sure. Yeah. In fact, if you if you sign up on our website, just take action, sign up petition to Kroger, we can provide you with an action kit where you can actually go in and talk to your manager of your store um, and tell them how you feel. And the great thing about this is it's pretty darn easy. You know, go in when you're getting your groceries and say, I want to talk to your manager. Um, we have a fact sheet you can print it out on our website at beaction.org. You can print it out and say, you know, what are you doing about this? You can print out our, our scorecard and say, you guys didn't do so great on the scorecard can you do better? You know, otherwise I'm going to take my business elsewhere. It also provides you a pretty good guide of where you're going to be able to find the healthier, better food for your family and yeah, who's yeah. actually working hard to provide that food. So Kroger, I, mean, I don't have a Kroger by me, but I think they own a bunch of different retail chains. Who, yes. Like who's Kroger outside of just that kind of holding name? Sure. So they have a variety. You know, it's actually um, I can get a list on our website if it's helpful yeah. on who's near you. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there we can also if you just go to Kroger.org and put in your zip code um, or excuse me, Kroger.com, um, you mm -hmm. can find a store near you that's owned by Kroger. Um, so they have a ton of smaller ones. I, I believe they own um, like Rayleigh's in California and a, a huge number of other stores as well. Um, but the good news is, is I think the retailers are listening and I, I, I am hopeful that this campaign won't take long to get big progress uh, with the grocery retailers. They're also facing a lot of pressure from online um, stores that are selling healthy organic food, like Thrive Market, for example, um, which is selling organic food more cheaply. Amazon's a big competitor. Um, these retailers are under a huge amount of pressure right now to show their value to consumers and be responsive to them. So I do think that if we raise our voices, they will listen um, because they know that, that bees are essential to the food system and to them being able to provide the food that consumers want. Um, they get it that people want more organic. In fact, what's so interesting, Pedram, is that um, the demand for organic is so high in the United States that we're actually importing a huge amount of organic um, to meet consumer demand. And why is that happening? Well, our farmers here in the U.S. are not getting the support they need to expand production of organic here in the U.S. That's another piece of our campaign. We're mm -hmm. saying to these retailers, we want you to support America's farmers. People want local organic food. They're supporting their farmers markets, you know, which is another place you really should be supporting locally. Those, there's been a huge explosion in farmers markets where you get to support your farmers directly that are doing the right thing for your health and the planet. Um, but in the meantime, you know, these retailers uh, need to hear from you that it's important that they are sourcing from America's farmers, um, which really impacts our environment here at home. Um, and, and our food security long term. Um, so, so that's another request of this campaign is that they support America's farmers and that they support um, and they source from domestic sources for, for their food, um, for the sustainable organic food for, for consumers. I love that this is working. Like I, I love yeah. that we have wins and it's it's heading in the right direction. Um, that that's really heartwarming. Um, there's a couple things that I kind of learned on my path of of kind of you know looking at this this organic industry and in that it takes I think up to three years to get certified as an organic farm. Mm -hmm. So that you basically you do all the stuff, you put out all the money, and then you basically have to sell it as non sell your produce as non organic. So you don't really recoup your money for a couple years until you can mm -hmm. get going and I know that there's some some uh, initiatives out there trying to help people with those transitions because there is mm -hmm. I mean there, there's tons of farmland out there and you yeah. know a lot of a lot of people are, are you know looking to make the change and there's some organizational stuff that needs to happen and I get it I mean look if people have been dumping Dow chemicals um, on Donald Trump and their land um, uh, you know all through this this you know last decade then what happens is you need the the soil to rehabilitate right and so I, I sure. get the need for it um, so for you guys to be pushing this with all of the, the, the food uh, kind of distribution centers, like whether it's Kroger's or Ralph's or whatever, uh, does it make sense for us to go kind of broad or to target one at a time and really get the big dominoes to fall? Right. So you're asking, how can we, what, what's the best strategy? To yeah. Increase? I mean, I could go into, I go to Trader Joe's, I go to Whole Foods and we'll get right. a Ralph's down the street. Do I go tell all of them mm -hmm. this stuff or do I just say, look, let's focus on Kroger's because when they fall, then, then it just, mm -hmm. it's a bigger thing. Yeah. Well, we're, we're talking to all, almost all of the big retailers, a large percentage of them. Um, they do need to hear from their customers. That this is an important thing for them and that, that you care about pollinators. So wherever you shop, 
please do let the manager know. Mm -hmm. We are focusing our on the ground actions, our week of action upon Kroger because they're the one of the largest and they're ones that's dragging its feet. So and they're not listening, hope, yeah. Yeah, and we really hope that we can get through um, to, to all the big retailers. They're gonna be leaguers, leaders and they're gonna be laggards mm -hmm. and the, the leaders tend to shift the industry, but if you can move the laggards, it brings along everybody else, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. The laggards with a lot of purchasing power. And and so we're hoping to see leadership. We're hoping that Kroger will choose to be a leader. Um, we're just starting this campaign and we're hopeful, hey, Kroger tomorrow is gonna turn around and say, yeah, you're right. We need to protect bees. We know people want more organic. We're gonna make it possible. We're gonna invest in building the supply of organic food in the US and we're gonna support um, what people want, which is healthy food for us, healthy food for the bees. Um, so, so that's what we hope. And, um, we are focusing right now on Kroger as our kind of core, um, target for this campaign. Um, but you know, wherever you shop, um, we're hopeful that you can make yourself heard that you care about pollinators. You want, um, your store to make, um, their food more pollinator friendly by getting the by getting to pollinator toxic pesticides out of the food food system and then we also want to work on you know getting more truly bee friendly and people friendly food out there by expanding organic um, and like you were saying like how do we increase organic in the US because it is it is a transition for farmers it is a big investment um, there's some really exciting models out there that are happening uh, you know Kroger excuse me um, Costco is actually partnered with growers to help them make this transition and increase organic supply and it's working. Hmm. They actually, uh, you know, they're working, they're partnering with, with a variety of farms and actually increasing um, their supply of organic because they know their customers want it. And I think if more grocery stores or investors would follow that model, that would be one way to help farmers to know that it's worth it to, to transition. Um, Another thing that would be really helpful and honestly is going to be required to transition more land to organic and to better practices that are, you know, agroecological um, farming practices that are better for us and better for the climate and better um, overall for everybody, including farmers. Um, we're going to need some support. And there are programs right now in, to, in today's budget that was that was just released um, that are really important to support existing organic farmers and farmers in transition um, that are on the chopping block. Yep. Um, some of the most important conservation programs that all of our farmers actually rely on, whether they're conventional or organic, to protect the environment, to protect critical species like pollinators, and to prevent runoff, like the runoff of pesticides and fertilizer that's causing a huge dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico because of all the pollution from farm fields heading into the Mississippi. Those important conservation programs are on the chopping block right now. And so we're really going to be pushing for our members of Congress to hold the line strong and, and support our farmers and support all eaters and our planet by not cutting these critical conservation programs um, in the in the budget moving forward. So that's another place where we can really fight back and where our members of Congress need to hear from us. This is not something that we should be toying with. Um, and, and so that's another place where we're hopeful that people will take action and uh, we'll be rolling out more of those actions um, via um, our website and via our action list. So if folks are interested in getting involved in that fight, I encourage you to visit our website at, at foe.org and sign up and uh, you can become part of the resistance. Love it, love it. Uh, I'm a big fan of the work that you guys are doing. Um, I get petitions and, and updates and all sorts of things, you know, that uh, you know really keep me involved and activated um, as a member of this society. And it doesn't take long. That's a, you know, that's the part where it's just like you know, it doesn't take much to get involved, but it's that apathy and that kind of that that sense of you know, people are like, you know, I don't even want to be a clicktivist. It's like, okay, well, yeah, I'll hey. click on things and I'll send them off. But you know, uh, Lorenzo just just I am me here. It's like. Kroger's owns Ralph's. That's the local grocery store down the road. Right. I'm going to be there at some point in the next week or so. And, and sure. believe you me, I'm going to call over that manager. I'm going to be like, yo, do you know that you guys are, are you know, dragging your feet here? Right? How, how hard is that? If he hears that from 100 people, what does that mm -hmm. do? Like, how does that bubble up to the corporate offices of Kroger where they're like, yo, you know what? People are, people are talking. Right, mm -hmm. and that's I think I think as I recall, that's how this started to roll out with Home Depot and Lowe's with the bees, right? right? Exactly. People started when you know, they had to go to Home Depot or just when they on the way home from work, stop by, 
talk to the manager. And you know what? The managers report up the chain and it does get to upper management, mm -hmm. especially when people are willing to go into the store and actually talk to a manager. It makes a huge impact. You know, that's how we move these big retailers like Home Depot, you know, and, and the great thing is this isn't actually hard. You know, it, people think, oh gosh, activism is actually really hard. But in reality, it's, it's kind of just like most things in life, you know, 80% is just showing up yeah. in terms of your effectiveness. And so just showing up and showing that you care sends a ripple effect and it does add up to a lot of change. And that's how we won this campaign. And as soon as one of these retailers makes a commitment, the dominoes begin to fall and others realize, oh gosh, they're showing leadership. They're mm -hmm. doing the right thing. I need to catch up with that because mm -hmm. that's what people want. I mean, that we're in a different world now. I think people are much more awakened to the dire situation we are in with the environment. And, and in terms of the food system, you know, climate change is gonna be a huge impediment to our ability to feed future generations. And at the same time, you know, we, we are, agriculture in the food system is contributing a third of greenhouse gases, right? That's huge. And by transitioning to regenerative agriculture, agriculture that heals the soil, that heals our ecosystems and allows the earth to feed us as it's meant to actually can sequester carbon in the soil. It's a climate solution. It's a solution for our health. It's a solution also for our farmers and our rural economies that are that are struggling right now. And so it's a win, win, win. And so, you know, you can be part of that change by going into that Ralph's when you're in to get that milk or the diapers or whatever you need to get and telling that 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 store manager, I want to see this store be a leader and protect pollinators and my health and make this change and you can be part of the solution uh, by joining us you know it could be as simple as, as clicking and taking an action or calling your member of congress ringing their phones off the hook has made a difference it has helped to hold the line on so many critical fights from health care to immigration fights right you know we've got a lot of fights on our hands but them hearing from you lets them know that when you go to the voting booth in 2018 their votes count and that you're watching. Yep. And so it does matter. And if you want, we can help you show up to those town hall meetings and show up to those district offices and let your voice be heard. And because not enough people are doing it, it actually makes a huge difference, right? And as more and more of us do it, they, they begin to listen even more to us and not to the dollars that are coming from the huge pesticide companies and oil companies that have bought their votes up to now. So we just have to be louder and fiercer because too much is at stake. That's it. Too much is at stake. Uh, yeah. Lisa, I'm such, I'm such a fan of the work that you're doing. Um, the website again, foe.org for Friends of the Earth. Uh, get your toolkit, go figure out you know, how you're going to approach the manager at uh, you know, the local uh, grocery store that you're going to, and just find other ways to get involved. Look, this is actually kind of fun, it's, and, and it's getting more and more fun because as the, the, kind of like the, the darkness has taken over Washington, people are just like, okay, that's it, enough right mm -hmm. and so with that comes all sorts of hope and good news and inspiration that, that's starting to spring up from the, from the grassroots and it's it's moms like Lisa it's dads like me it's it's people just like you right don't wait for people like Lisa and me to go figure figure all this out and fix the world for you that's not how this works it's your world it's your yep. world right exactly foe.org Lisa thanks so much for your time always a pleasure would love to have you back anytime stuff comes up just let me know I'm a big fan of the work you're doing uh, thanks I'm a big fan of yours too and thank you so much for everybody for tuning in yeah thank you let me know what you think get to work I would love to see you doing a Facebook live of your trip to the grocery store and let the world know what you're doing and get it going and spread it from there I'll see you next time thanks Thank you.